Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of the Youth Review. There's been a good couple of weeks for Manchester United's academy at the moment so we're going to go through everything that's happened in this month, a little bit of a look ahead to what's coming next month and obviously we're going to talk about whether Diego Delo is ready for the first team at the moment after a pretty impressive debut against Stoke this weekend. So let's start at the very top then. The under 18s have looked pretty good this season. We started with a 3-3 uh, draw against Derby. It was very unlucky, conceded right at the death there and it was... It was just one of those games, a little bit of experience, a little bit of not putting the chances away that we had. I mean, Mason Greenwood could have had five that day without any exaggeration. Um, it was a, a great performance, a little bit of experience and would have seen it out. The next one, which is probably the performance of the academy so far this season, was a 3-1 away win to Liverpool. Jimmy Garner was brought back into the side and that's something that I expect to see. Uh, he's been featured with the under-23s. Uh, especially after the, the pre-season tour where he was part of the first team. And I think he's probably going to be staying with the under-23s for most of the season, but I do think when the bigger games come, City, Liverpool, FA Youth Cup, I do expect to see Jimmy brought back down into the under-18s, which is still his age group. So a 3-1 win away to Liverpool. Uh, Brandon Williams saw a red card um, in injury time, essentially. Ghana converted a penalty in the 90-plus-6. We saw a very good performance in that game from both centre-halves. I thought Bernard was a standout. I thought Mason had a good game. Uh, Alanga really stepped up. It was a, Jimmy Garner, especially, he looks like he's a level above this current setup. So it was good to see from that perspective that some of the lads was doing so well at this level. And we went to Liverpool not as favourites at all. A lot of people was expecting Liverpool, after the start that they'd made to the season, was going to turn us over, but wasn't the case. 3-1 away win. Fantastic. Then we, we had a game at the Cliff on Friday night and that ended up 5-1 to Manchester United. And honestly, it could have been 10. Um, Mason Greenwood putting in a phenomenal performance. We saw uh, Anthony Alanga again putting in a, a great performance. But the standout that night was probably debutant Charlie McCann. Uh, two incredible goals, absolutely filthy goals that he put in. A constant threat on that left-hand side. He's definitely going to be giving manager Neil Ryan a lot to think about uh, in selection because you've got Larger Ramanazi who's looking like he could be playing there regularly. You've still got Damani Mello who's currently out injured. You've obviously got Alanga on the right-hand side. Greenwood can play on the left as, as well as the right as well as up front. So it's good to have so many options. But Charlie's come in and done his chances no harm whatsoever with the performances that he put in against Stoke. Now it ended a little bit negatively. A bit of a, I'm not sure how we say this, a little bit of a, a mishmash performance, should we say. There was rotations, there's been injuries, there's been suspensions, obviously Brandon Williams out after the red card uh, against Liverpool. But there wasn't really any excuse. The United battered Middlesbrough and come away 3-1 losers, if that's possible. Um, doing the wrong thing at the wrong time. I've got a real bit of a bugbear with the under-18s this season. Um, and it's definitely systemal. It's not the player's decision. It's it's coming from the management. And on one hand, I get it. This is an age group to develop. Winning isn't everything at this age group. This is where you develop. This is where you experiment. This is where you try things. And the things that work, they stay and they can be spectacular. But on the other hand, these are now professional footballers. And these, different to the under-16s. And... Listen, your kid's playing on a Saturday morning or a Sunday morning, somewhere like that. Yep, I don't expect you to be getting on the case. And even at under 12s, under 13s, under 14s, 15s, and even 16s at Manchester United, don't get on the kid's case. This is where they develop. But once they become under 18, some of these are very highly paid 17 and 18 year olds. There has to be an expectation that you go from a different mentality of that under 16s, oh, it's all about developing, it's all nicey nicey to the very real world situation. Some of these lads have been on a pre-season tour with the first team. Look how ruthless that first team is. It has to begin to be ruthless at some point. There has to begin to be accountability. There has to begin to be uh, an expectation that the result matters a little bit more than the development and the performance and stuff like that. I'm not saying it's everything, but it's not nothing. There has to be some sort of of at what point do you instill that you are a professional footballer wearing a Manchester United badge, you are now expected to win every single time you step onto that football pitch. Because oh, there's some things that I'm seeing with the under-18s at the moment where they're, they're insisting on playing out the back. It's very fashionable, fashionable to play out the back. Centre-half split, you're passing it back to the keeper, you're expecting him to do things with it on the floor that aren't involving getting rid of it. And no one's saying 
you have to get rid of it. There's other options. You can play it into the midfield. You can cut it over the defence into the midfield. You can go wider, um, a bit further up the pitch. But every time United have tried to play out of the back at the moment, they've put themselves under pressure. And in the, the Middlesbrough game, it cost us the game, arguably, by doing that. These mistakes have happened in every single game. And I've joked about it in the first game against Derby. Like, whoa, I don't like that. We joked about it in the, the game at the Cliff at Stop, uh, against Stoke. Um, I don't like it. I didn't like it then. I, I was like, this isn't, this isn't going to pan out for us very well. I got no issues with doing it in training. Of course, you've got to have other options. I like to see the variety in how Manchester United can play. But I don't know. I just, there's, I'm not saying never do it again. I'm just saying there's four matches now where we've done it and we've put ourselves in danger in every one of those matches by doing it. At what point does either the management step in and say, we need to do less of that in a game or we need to improve that before we're doing it in a game? Um, because I think it's arguably cost us points this weekend. But I don't want to harp on about it too much. Uh, I'm going to talk about the top five performances that I've seen uh, this season. Um, or t- top four or five performances that I've seen. I'd say... A real standout performance was uh, Ted and Mengi coming in uh, from a bit of a long-term injury against Stoke, come in at centre-half and looked immense. Uh, a brilliant performance, an absolutely mature, um, high-quality performance from Mengi. I think he's going to be hard to shift at centre-half um, when everybody's fit. Um, I thought Charlie McCann's against Stoke was, uh, was a real joy to watch. Uh, both Bernard and Garner against Liverpool were, were two excellent performances as well but I think the most consistent it's just been Mason and uh, there's no shocks there I'm sure with everybody but Mason has been fantastic uh, for Manchester United under 18s this season so far four goals four games and he's missed two penalties in that as well um, there's still a lot to add to Mason's game uh, if we're being critical on him because there's a lot in his game already which has been proven he's He's spreading it nicely. He's involved in link-up play, uh, as you would expect for someone that's played on the left and played on the right and played as a number 10. I think he's going to really got to really nail down this um, this number 9 position. And I think that involves doing a little bit more of those darts into the box, a little bit more movement, like you would see a, a real traditional centre-forward. Now, I know it's hard. I know it's, he's, he's not really ever been a proper centre-forward, but this is where I would hope someone at the club is teaching him the runs to make, teaching him how to hold up the ball like a centre-forward. Because he's got the one-two touch play, he's got the turn and hit it, he's got long-range shots, he's got close-up finishing, he's got a lot in his game. If he's going to play number nine, I think that's where he's probably going to end up being, uh, where he matures and develops, then he's got to add a couple more strings to his bow, I think, as a centre-forward, and have a couple more tricks. Um, He can beat you on the left, he can beat you on the right, he's he's two-footed, but there's, there's a couple more... What's the word I'm looking for? It's just that now, isn't it? It's that centre forward now. It's the tools of the trade. It's you know something maybe Alan Shearer could teach him. Those dirty dark arts. If you can add those to his game, he's going to be an absolute nightmare. I think his uh, he's he's the player of the month for me. Uh, up against some strong competition, but his consistency has been there. The level has been there. I think he's going away with England this weekend. So interesting to see what happens when he comes back and when he starts to feature in the under 19s. But we're going to talk about that a little bit later on then. So in the 23s, now they've done all right. They've got two wins, two draws. It's nice to see that switch in mentality. There's been a massive personnel overhaul. Uh, the the last couple of seasons under 18s now the bulk of this under 23 side and they've brought with them a pretty good mentality there's still a couple of periphery members of the squad that aren't going to make it United and arguably not really Premier League football level but the bulk of the squad is elite and it's it's very good and even though the best of the players like Fosu Mensa and Axel Tuanzebi are out on loan there's still some real good players and what's nice to see is they've really started to put a decent back four now together um, Tanner's playing quite regular at right back you've got Leo Connor which I know a lot of people are confused about oh, I thought he was a right back well he can play on the left as well it's not an issue um Roshan Williams and, and Regan Poole forming a pretty decent centre-half partnership. Both good ball-playing players, both physical, both quick, um, good centre-halves. So, um, added to those this week, we saw Diego Delo making his debut for United. And I've got to say, he looked a level above. Now, he's with his peers. Diego is uh, still young himself. He's still uh, eligible to be playing at this level for many a season just yet. 
but he definitely looked a level above and he looked a level above not just with the ball at his feet but physically he looked a level above now when he did have the ball at his feet he was he was happy to come inside he was happy to go around the outside loves a step over he was quick and aggressive he, he liked to nip in and get behind he liked to play those balls across the back he knew the right time to do those um i was very impressed with the size of the guy actually because I, I when you see the pictures of him you see the videos of him he didn't look physically imposing, but playing up against the rest of the lads that was you know, his peers, he looked a lot bigger, like muscular bigger. So I think he's probably going to be ready for the physical side of the Premier League. Um, the, the only thing we didn't get to see against Stoke really was how he copes defensively, which is going to be a massive ask in the first team. He's going to get very little protection on the right-hand side because we know that United like to kip over to the left a little bit. So he's going to need to, or Jose is going to need to know how he can cope, and I'm sure he's doing that in training at the moment, uh, defensively. If he's got it defensively, he's definitely got it going forward. And I think that there's a real chance that he can get some game time this season. I, I still think it's far too early to expect that he'll be the first choice right back by the end of the season. But I do think that he can build his way to get in there. And there might be a bit of a tussle between him and Fosu Mansa when Fosu Mansa comes back. But I've been very impressed with him in his debut there in, in the under-23s. He's coming back from a knee operation, so that's going to take a little bit of time to heal. Once that's started to properly heal, he's got three, four games under his belt. I wouldn't be surprised to see Jose utilise him. He might even utilise him against Derby, considering that. You know, we're pretty strapped for full-backs in the first team. If he wants to give anyone a rest, that's the perfect opportunity to do so. Um, aside from Diogo, uh, Diego Delo, um the Southampton game was behind closed doors. Didn't get to see that. Uh, seen the other games that we've played, uh, and obviously was at Old Trafford on Friday night against Stoke, who put up a tough test and had quite a lot of first-team players in and around there. And they've got the, the talented uh, Tyrese Campbell playing up front for them, but they didn't really get the ball to him, and they didn't really offer as much of a threat. Um, they was very solid. Uh, they was hard to create chances against, but we looked good doing so. And there was a, a few standout performances. Uh, Nishan Burkhart looked great. Uh, I don't think he gets the plaudits in this team because of some of the superstar signings and the names that are around. Obviously, you've got Angel, you've got Chong that people are looking for, and Diego Delo was the talking point of that game on Friday as well. But I think Burkhart's been been very good this season. He's had hamstring niggles, which have kept him in and out of the side. The finish that he had against Aston Villa was absolutely beautiful. If you've not seen it, go check it out. Um, and he, he played his part in the goal and the build-up to the goal that Angel scored this weekend as well. Led the line quite well. I think he's a level above uh, Josh Bowie. I hope he starts at centre-forward more than Bowie. And then I think you've got options that you can bring in on the left wing, on the right wing, like Chong uh, and Barlow. And, and I think you've got a pretty solid line-up there. Chung and Gomez have done so so far so good in the under-23 fixtures. Uh, Chung's got one goal and two assists. Angel's got three goals and one assist. Angel's level of performance on Friday against Stoke makes it look like he's levelled up his game uh, recently. It makes it look like he's he's taking... Um, He's, he took his training to the next level, he looks quick, he looks fit, he looks agile, and he was playing against a very experienced Stoke midfield as well. They had Charlie Adam in there, and he took the piss out of him. He absolutely terrorised him. His decision-making and the passes that he plays are super intelligent. He always makes the right ball at the right time. He's got so much time on the ball. Those that say his physicality is an issue. Now, I think Angel might be the most fouled player I've ever seen. All it takes is a little someone to lean on him, and because he's so small, he goes down. He might go down easy sometimes, but he's going down because... I think what Marouane Fellaini must be able to do to him in training. He must be able to just lean on him and, and absolutely collapse him. But he wins a lot of fouls. And he's a guy that can put the ball in the back of the net from a free kick. It could be an absolutely massive asset to bring somebody like that in. Now, if you've got a six foot three, six foot four defender, as Stoke did, Angel can absolutely dance around him because there's no way a six foot three human being can move like a, a five foot six, five foot seven, um, you know, eight stone guy like Angel is. There's absolutely no way he does that good with both feet, incredibly agile, he's got time on the ball because he's got the intelligence to be able to make the good runs. I don't know how Angel breaks into the first team. And a lot of people say Jose's not going to dig in because he's little. Well, look at the amount of times Juan Matt has played for Manchester United under Jose Mourinho. I say you're wrong. Um, I think there is a time and a place that you could use him, and I'd love to see him start being utilised. This is another player that might play against Derby, uh, as might Chung, probably from the bench rather than starting, let's be realistic. But I thought, again, I thought Chung, Chung's aggressive, um, he's, he's 
fast. He's just got a, a real intensity to his play all the time. It's great to watch. And I think Chong uh, and Angel are the ones that the first team should be earmarking as players that they're going to draft in. Um, they performed admirably on the tour. They've started this season like a house on fire. They've not gone on loan. I can see a loan in both of their futures at some point as well. I'd love to see them both go with Germany or to Spain or Portugal, a league that's just a little bit less intense physically than the Premier League is. See what they can do, develop their skills, develop their time on the ball, come back to the Premier League uh, once they've got that, got used to that match pace of first team football and I think they'll be fine. These are two five star potential players and I can't wait to see what they do in the first team. So let's have a look at next month's fixtures then. What we've got is we've got Reading, uh, Middlesbrough and Norwich for the under-23s. You've got to be hoping for two out of three wins, if not three out of three wins for the under-23s there to continue their good start. The 18s have only got two games listed, which is Blackburn and West Brom. Uh, but then the under-19s are back in play as well. So the under-19s is going to be a little bit of a mix. The, the better of the players that went up, um, I'm assuming, I would say Chong, Burkhart, and Gomez are going to feature probably Leo Connor as well. Uh, they're going to come back into the under-18 side, essentially. The 18 side will make the bulk of it up. Uh, and that will be the under-19 squad. Very interested to see how, or who even, is going to be in charge. It's been Nicky Butt recently. If it's Nicky Butt, I'm very interested to see how he puts together these two different sides. Um, I think he'll probably bring Burkhart down, as I said. Chong and Angel. Uh, it's how he knits those together into one team because the under 18 is doing bits at the moment and you know, the likes of Garner, um, Chong, Angel look very at home in the 23s. You want that experience. You want their, um, the fact that they've been playing with bigger players to be an asset to the, the lads in the 18s that are coming and doing bits that are, are really exciting everybody. So it'd be interesting to see if Burkhardt gets moved aside and goes back on the wing, which is where they sort of finished together in the under-18s last season, or if Burkhardt's given the option to lead the line and Greenwood plays a bit more of a supporting role. Uh, but it's very interesting to see. It was a little bit disappointing last season. United went out in the round of 16 to Liverpool. Uh, Steven Gerrard's Liverpool at Tranmere. But I think it shows the level of English youth football at the moment. You had five... Um, English teams made it to the round of 16s. Uh, four made it to the quarterfinals because obviously United faced uh, Liverpool in that round of 16. Uh, you had two make the semi and one make the final. So English football is absolutely bossing it at this level in Europe at the moment. And the only time we lost is Chelsea lost to... Um, to Barcelona in the final. Tottenham lost to Porto, who run Chelsea very close in the semi-final. Uh, City lost to the eventual winners in Barcelona. And then Liverpool knocked out by City and, and United was knocked out by Liverpool. So um, I think that English football is in a very good place at the moment. There, there's some brilliant footballers down at the, those levels. And I am very interested to see how those go down. Um, I'm probably going to go to the under-19 under youth games uh, because the, the fixtures mirror the first team up until the end of the group stage, obviously because they can't predict which teams are going to go through. So um, I'm going to go check out all of the youth games uh, as they're mirrored, the home ones at least, the first team games. Um, so I'm probably going to get some footage from those for the youth reviews that we're going to be doing then. But it's a competition that I'm hoping that United put a lot of emphasis on and with the youth cup as well. We need to do better than we have done the last couple of years. But that is it for this week's youth review. Um, keep it locked, keep it subscribed. Get your comments in, get your likes. If you've got any questions about the Academy or anything along those lines, then stick them in the comments below. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and uh, I will see you in the next one. Laters.